What's up? What's up? Hello, everyone. Another week. Some more stats. Some big news. Oh, man. Intercession of the most popular team this week. That's kind of crazy. Maybe people are uh, getting the rust out before the new edition does the changeover and we get the boosted Astartes rules. Yes. Uh, riding the hype train before it arrives, even. Yeah, sometimes you just got to get on the train and uh, see where it goes, you know? Maybe maybe intercession wasn't that bad. And it turns out this week, almost a 50-50, 9% of the meta, 50-50 record, a 4-0 from Jared O out in uh, Australia against Commandos, Phobos, Wormblade. That's a real, that's a real win. How many it's only a nine-person tournament. Nine-person nine tournament, four rounds, so probably a pretty new group. But out there in Australia, Jared O, good job, man. 4-0. Nice. nice. Also up there in popularity, Nemesis Claw. Elite's looking uh, pretty hot, even though the new edition has not yet dropped. Yeah, unfortunately for them, not doing quite as well as everyone else, which is pretty interesting, actually. Where are they? Do they have any like, awesome records, like 4-0 type stuff? I'm trying to find them right now. Oh, uh, 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 there it is. I'm blind. All right, there we go. 43. Oh, we did have a 4-0 in looks like in Eastern, like in uh, Poland, it looks like. 10-person tournament, 4-0, beating Mandrakes, Brood Brothers, Wormblade, probably. Solid result. Everyone else taking a couple losses. A lot of people taking three losses. So, turns out the elites in this edition, they're just, they're just aching for Counteract. I kind of wonder if some of these tournaments are... People getting a jump on it because we know what the counteract phase is. Maybe there's some people playing with counteract already. That would be kind of amusing. That would be kind of amusing. Yeah, I mean, there definitely is like, we know how obscuring works. We know how counteract works. And just those two are a pretty big, easy to learn, uh, pretty big deal changes. Oh, interesting. Actually, so that intercession win, the 4-0 intercessor, intercession win in Australia, that was actually a golden ticket winner. So we have an intercession player in the current edition winning a championship event, like the top of their circuit, and he's going to go to the world championships, maybe. Well, that's pretty snazzy. Uh, were there pretty other cool, big cool. names we recognize there? No one that I recognize off the cuff. But maybe we could try to get the get Jared O on. You know, we've got a, it's kind of hard to schedule Australia, but every once in a while we've managed to line it up and we know some of the Australian guys. So maybe we can get him on and see what he was doing. See if I can see his roster. Nope. Rosters are denied. Subscriber only feature. Rip. So who knows if ever anyone is interested in seeing that, maybe we'll try to get him on. Yeah. Well, let us know in the comments if you would like that. Uh, as far as the overperformers this week, we've got a fair number of them. With Blooded taking the highest placing this week. And they did go 4-0 in the Pacific Northwest. Brandon B. He went to the World Championships last year. He's been the Blooded player of the region. And clean 4-0 at Aegis Games. In a 10-person tournament. Yeah. Looks like, uh, what, what do we have? Uh, just a couple players on Blooded this week? Just three players. So, two of them did... Much better than 50-50, and one of them went 1-2. So 3-1, 4-0, and a 2-1 record. Pretty high win rate overall. Kasserkin had a pretty good weekend also. Two fully undefeated records, 4-0 and a 3-0, with, with another 3-1 record. And then everyone else went some version of something in two. That's like the best we've seen Kasserkin do possibly ever. Yep, out in Argentina, Wampy R took his tournament, and we have heard, seen him on this in the past, so he's not a name that we're unfamiliar with. And then in the out-of-the-box tournament in Ottawa, Canada, at a 10-person tournament. So, you know, still nothing too crazy. This week didn't have any major GT-scale events, but a couple three-rounders, a couple four-rounders, with some interesting results here and there. Yeah, kind of interesting to see what the the stats look like in the context of no major events, just kind of like smaller things. Um, I think that actually makes a lot of sense that the elites are so popular and kind of doing a little better because they definitely thrive a little more as far as the current edition in that environment. Yeah. 
Uh, as far as like the big meta monsters, the only one that has been doing consistently very well that did well this week was Gellerpox Infected. You know, Felgor Ravagers, 55%. Brood Brothers, 55%. Mandrakes, 48%. Yeah, nothing else that's really been cruising. You know, Nemesis Claw took a little bit of a beating this week. Hearn Ken Jaeger climbed back up from like a 30% to a 40%. So, lots of losers this week. But, you know, Phobos out there with a 4% play rate and 60% win rate. Pretty good. Yeah, they're like just barely not in the red zone for overperforming, which is kind of amusing to see. Yeah, no, only one person in a 3-0, and it looks like it might have been in a very weird scoring format, because it was an 8-7-7, and then the highest I've seen on this is probably a 12 win, so they might be doing the WTC scoring, where basically based on the differential, that's what you're scoring, so maybe they're testing out next year's WTC rules already. Yeah, definitely High possible. fleet, actually. With a 57% win rate, so pour, pouring one out for the homies, you know, these these are the teams that are leaving this next edition, so maybe people are trying to get in their games while they can. Yeah. Uh, Chaos Cult is back with enough people to have a stat and doing pretty well while they're at it. Yeah, interestingly enough, the 3-0 record from Wallace W out in Spain. So again, once again, you know, Chaos Cults are a Spanish problem. There was one player who went one and two, it looks like, in Massachusetts. And then another player in Karchev in Argentina at the at the tournament where Wampi took a 4-0 result. He did not do that great with a 2-2 record. Well, maybe not, not bad, not great. Inquisitorial agents definitely... Definitely took a beating this week. Uh, they're they not got, like the absolute floor of popularity, but their win rate is tanked. They won a grand total of two games across five players. Yikes. Really showing that they are one of those skill check teams. Like, you really have to know the game on a fundamental level to really get anything going with them. We'll see what happens to them in the new edition. Maybe they'll get some big boosts, or maybe, you know, they'll, their play style will remain. I can't imagine that counterspell goes away. Yeah, I, I, like it seems like over the last couple of weeks we haven't seen them like super skyrocket or super tank. So um, I think this looks a little bit like an outlier if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah. Higher tech circle forty percent, Wormblade thirty six percent because John R took his four zero win at his local monthly on Brood Brothers, passing up the Wormblade for their more powerful cousins. Any other major things that we want to talk about this week? I guess, you know, while we're here, what are we excited for? You know, the the pre-release window is out. We know the new edition is coming, and we did just talk with Mountainside Tabletop. And next week, we'll have uh, a slightly more detailed podcast. Yeah, stay tuned for that one. Um, looking forward to hearing with uh, hearing from Shane from Command Point. will be joining us once again. It will be a fun one. Yeah. And uh, if you're tuning in on YouTube on Friday, uh, maybe tune in to play on tabletop for Saturday. Tomorrow. Or if yeah, you're tomorrow. listening to it on the tomorrow Monday, or at the end of this week Saturday. for our Patreon listeners. Yes, the 21st, uh, September 21st. Yeah. All right. Well, it doesn't look like there's anything too surprising in here. You know, next time, it, leave us a comment in the notes if you want us to dive into anything in particular. But. Until then, have a great day, everybody. See you next time.